Real disease. Dr. Lomax said, I don't really know if it's real, but I'll go and look it up. I went and consulted um, a textbook, and Karen matched up with the symptoms quite well. To be doubly certain, she reaches out to Dr. Samuel Seward, an expert in this highly unusual disease. Karen had the albinism and the bleeding in the intestines that caused the symptoms like the severe abdominal pain, diarrhea that can be so bad that it's really disabling. I thought she should be tested for this, and we drew the blood and sent it off. Waiting on the results of the blood test, I wondered, what now? What's going to lie ahead? And then after a week, Karen came into the office and I had the lab test back. She actually had hermansky pudlak syndrome. hermansky pudlak syndrome, or HPS, is an extremely rare genetic disease. In healthy individuals, proteins act as the building blocks for virtually every function of the body, including vision, digestion, and respiration. But in patients like Karen, the proteins malfunction, impairing the body's ability to see, process foods, and breathe. Any patient with a genetic mutation like HPS, proteins are not created normally and cause problems. hermansky pudlak syndrome affects different organs of the body. It's really a terrible disease. HPS is a complex condition, but its first symptom, albinism, is hard to miss. If you have HPS, then you have albinism. Patients with HPS can make pigment, which we call melanin, but they can't get the pigment where it needs to be. It's not packaged correctly and transported to our skin or to our hair or to our eyes as it should be normally. Most of the patients are legally blind. While Karen adjusted easily to living with poor eyesight, the bowel problems that first plagued her when she was nine years old were also triggered by HPS. About 20% will develop what we call inflammatory bowel disease or a colitis. When you have inflammation in HPS colitis, the inflammation can be so severe that the intestines really can't work very well. And that's what causes the diarrhea. Some people with HPS develop a colitis similar to Crohn's disease, but it's the colitis of HPS. Karen's intestinal problems were especially severe because HPS not only caused her bleeding ulcers, but clotting problems as well. In healthy individuals, our platelets clot our blood when we have an injury. HPS patients have a problem with their platelets. So as a result, it takes them much longer to create a clot and stop the flow of blood. So the HPS colitis causes the bleeding ulcers. And because of this basic platelet abnormality, the bleeding can be quite profound. It's absolutely the case internal injuries can result in very serious bleeding for someone with HPS. While Karen has been able to manage all of the unfortunate symptoms that go hand in hand with the disease, there is one remaining symptom that may prove to be fatal. Most people with HPS will develop pulmonary fibrosis at some point in their lives. Pulmonary fibrosis is a chronic lung disease. If you imagine the tissue in the lungs being like a very thin membrane, and that's what the oxygen passes through, that membrane gets thicker and thicker to a point where oxygen can't even pass through it anymore and the lungs can't function. Those with HPS and pulmonary fibrosis or normal life expectancy is four to 10 years after they're diagnosed. At first I thought that, no, this is not possible. I was really, for the first time, scared that I might die. Thirty-eight-year-old Karen Tillman has just learned she's been living with HPS an extremely rare genetic disorder. Even more troubling is that as it advances, almost all patients develop pulmonary fibrosis, a terminal lung disease. Unfortunately, there's no cure for hermansky pudlak syndrome or pulmonary fibrosis. Just three months after getting a diagnosis, Karen is told she is in the early stages of the condition. 
When I was first diagnosed with the pulmonary fibrosis issue of HPS, they told me that I would probably be on oxygen by the time I was 45. And dead by the time I was 50. And I didn't want to scare Holly, but I wanted to prepare her somehow. So we sat down and I told her, I said, someday I might have to go on a ventilator. She reached over and she said, Mom, it's going to all be okay. <laughs> it's one of those things you just don't dwell on. I figure the more normal I can live my life, the more normal she can live hers. Despite the overwhelming grief that comes with having pulmonary fibrosis, there are medications that can slow down the disease. For people that have HPS who are dealing with pulmonary fibrosis, I believe early diagnosis is very helpful. There are lots of different treatment options available. Karen immediately starts using inhalers to minimize the inflammation of her lungs. And as terrible as the condition is, she's grateful to have received a diagnosis in time to begin treatment when it can still make a difference. There are things that people can do to take care of themselves who have early pulmonary fibrosis. Exercise and getting vaccines that particularly protect the lungs is very important. But given how serious her disease is, Karen finds it hard to understand why no doctor was able to recognize that she's been living with a deadly condition since the day she was born. hermansky pudlak syndrome is quite rare. I think I've seen about 40 to 50 cases of hermansky pudlak syndrome in my career. This was very upsetting, and so you, do, you just try to take your mind off of best you can and talk to her and reassure her that it's going to be okay. Today, nearly eight years after getting diagnosed, Karen Tillman is miraculously beating the odds. Karen today is holding steady on her pulmonary fibrosis. So far, it's been stable since I was 38. There's only been mild progression. Some patients faced with a difficult and chronic disease become very bitter over the years. And Karen, despite the rotten hand of cards health-wise that she's been dealt, she rises above it. Karen has dealt with the, the problems she's had better than anybody I know. She just seemed to accept what she had and has done the best she can with it. Since the diagnosis of hermansky pudlak syndrome and knowing it took me so long to find out what was wrong, I've become real involved in raising money. I, I do a walk run every year called the Human Race, and I also attend conferences where I talk to researchers and educate them about hermansky pudlak syndrome so they can maybe diagnose their patients because I don't want somebody to go 38 years before they find out so that if there is, is research that they can participate in or maybe just help them along their journey with some of the episodes they're dealing with. Karen is living that way because she is uh, helping people as best she can to live their day every day while being a volunteer at the hospital, plus giving encouragement to those who are down and out with the disease right now. There are those in far worse shape than she is, and she's there for them too to encourage them and, and give them hope for the future. I think Tommy's one of the most amazing spouses I know. He would often come with her to her doctor's appointments. He would come in and help her with her um, ostomy bags and um, help her you know, get to her appointments because she can't drive. He's just like Karen. He's uh, positive and smiling, pleasant, not bitter. Um, they are amazing people. The experience as a whole has bonded us even closer together, knowing that, that we are mortal, that we only have a limited amount of time. You have to live each day because you don't have any guarantee of tomorrow. Tommy is my rock. And I could not have made it through this journey without him. We just take it a day at a time. I'd like to see 
my daughter get married and be happy. I'd like to see my grandchildren born. I'd like to get a new set of lungs someday. We live in appreciate every moment that we have to get to spend together. It's cherished probably more than the average person. While Karen Tillman was born with a disease that presented its symptoms at birth, it took more than 40 years before Pam Partington's body began to mysteriously attack itself. In the fall of 1998, Pam Partington was focused on one thing alone, teaching her special needs students. I love to see kids succeed. I love to help kids to feel good about themselves and to feel confident. And soon after celebrating her 34th birthday, she met Christian Donner, an Austrian who shared Pam's love of the outdoors. When I met Pam, she was a very active person. We went for hikes in the mountains of New Hampshire. We did a lot of traveling and it was really fun. We both were ready to settle down. And on July 21st, 2000, Pam and Christian tie the knot. Almost immediately, they begin thinking about having children. We always wanted to have a family together. That was on the table from day one. We didn't waste any time because of our ages. And it didn't take long for me to get pregnant. I was very excited because I always wanted to be a mom. Pam's pregnancy goes off without a hitch. And nine months later, the couple welcomes their son, Lucas, into the world. I just fell in love with him as soon as I saw his face. I got pregnant soon after with Sophie. We really wanted a second child, and we did not want to wait too long so that the age difference was within a few years. When we found out that Pam was pregnant with uh, Sophie, our daughter, the second child, um, we were very excited because we had planned for that. I wanted a boy as the first child, and um, so I got one. And I felt at that point that um, having a girl would be wonderful. Pam was very excited to learn she was pregnant with Sophie. She enjoys being a mother, and I think both she and Christian were very excited about the news that they would be having a girl. Sophie was born August 2003. When she came home, it was just great. I was very excited um, when Sophie was born. She was just so, so adorable. Sophie was a little blonde bundle. Her little brother Lucas, of course, doted on her, as did Christian and Pam. I could not wish for a better wife and mother. I just marvel when I watch the amount of patience that she has with the kids. Despite having a full-time job and two toddlers, Pam juggles work and family with ease. In fact, life couldn't be better. But one morning, in the fall of 2004, she notices an odd sensation in her right hand. I was trying to write some notes on my dry erase board. I was having trouble with my hand. My fingers really were getting very stiff. And I noticed the sharpest zing right down my hand up into my wrist. She said it was like a stabbing pain, and her fingers were almost becoming immobile. When I got home, I took some ibuprofen. While the medication takes the edge off the pain that night, over the next few weeks, the strange ache returns whenever she uses her hand. It hurt, but it was a quick pain, and I didn't think that it was anything too serious. But soon, the pain is affecting both of Pam's hands, and simple, everyday tasks are starting to become impossible to complete. I noticed that trying to carry the grocery bags, I would have to drape them over my arm to carry them into the house because I just couldn't rely on my hands. She would just leave them or just come up and ask me to help her. When I was at work, 